Hello, good evening. Good evening. Uh, you guys can uh, hear my voice clear? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. All right. So two more minutes, so we'll start out. Okay. Uh, whose name is Albert? Huh? Oi? Not here. He sent me an email. I think, uh, all right, I think he's not joining today. Right. Uh, let's start up. Uh, 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 Dr. Shuha, uh, yeah. a student, uh, Alan, uh, he's waiting, uh, he's in the waiting room, waiting for you to let him in. Let me. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm right. yeah, joining them. Yeah. Thank you. Please uh, mute your mic. Yeah, thank you. All right. So today uh, we will be discussing on how to write your proposal for your thesis. Huh? So basically uh, after today, you can start writing your proposal. So uh, I believe all of you uh, received my notes earlier on and you have a basic idea of what is research. So did you receive everyone and go through? All right. Yeah, uh, some of you uh, also wrote to me that uh, can't access the library. I hope the issue is resolved now. Now, uh, the, the problem is solved. We, okay. we, we can now uh, get into the library. All right, very good, let's start. So, research. Research, huh? if you see the word, huh? research, that means search again, huh? again and again. Uh, so the word research means searching again and again, right? So how to search? Uh, in uh, academic research, you have to search things uh, in a systematic way, right? You can't go through as you wish or as you like. Uh, all right, uh, uh, Albert, that's fine. You just listen. And if you have any question, you can ask, no problem, right? So I was saying research huh? in academic, you need to find things, new things in following a scientific manner. Now, what is scientific? We will explain and how to do that. So in a simpler terms, huh, to search it again, huh, it, it needs to be a very rigorous and systematic inquiry. Hmm? Uh, followed by uh, proper steps and of course uh, we search in a systematic way to find or discover things uh, the result so if we summarize uh, research is an organized and systematic way of finding answer to your questions remember the the, the red color word uh, it needs to be organized systematic Finding answer to your questions. Finding answer to your questions. 
if you if you don't have any answer or if you couldn't find any answer after going through your process uh, uh, basically uh, nothing hmm? basically nothing right now what does that mean uh, when i say systematic there is a definite set of procedure and steps which you follow which are always done in order to get the most accurate result uh, we have two sessions today and uh, 21st again one more session in these two session i'll be explaining the steps and if you miss uh, some steps or some process uh, the result can be opposite you know so not in, in in a laboratory you see when uh, the chemist or the physician uh, they do a laboratory test and all if the ingredients are a bit uh, little or not higher or not in proportionate see something burst out right so the the whole uh, experiment go hell away similarly in the social science as well if you don't follow the systems uh, if you don't follow the process uh, if your uh, sampling is not right sampling process is not right so result also won't get the right one you see uh, so it needs to be systematic there is a definite set of procedure and steps which you follow which are always done to get uh, the most accurate result second uh, in research needs to be organized there is a structure or method uh, doing research it is a planned procedure and focus to a specific scope so organizing means uh, uh, i'll be explaining and i'll be giving a structure as well for britney university requirement you will see that uh, you you need to write five chapters chapter one is introduction chapter two is a literature review chapter three is uh, research methodology chapter four is data analysis and findings chapter five basically conclusion and the recommendation so you see it, it, it needs to be organized you can't write introduction then for then suddenly jump into your research methodology then you do data analysis then do literature you know uh, it is not organized so you need to write in an organized manner finding and some important things eh? this is the end of all research whether it is answer to a hypothesis or even a simple question eh? research is successful when you have you you we find answers if no answers nothing hmm? our whole attempt is in vain waste now what are the questions this is the central part of the research huh? if there is no question then the answer is no use huh? without question research has no focus no drive and no purpose huh? remember so there must be some questions huh? when you have questions in your mind then the problem arise and when you you tend to find answer of your problem that's how the research begins and when you successfully go through all the steps all the processes and find answer that's uh, you find your results you find your answer to your questions huh, to your problems so this is how your uh, search huh, or research is successful uh, i'm not sure whose mic is on huh? please uh, mute it now i was saying about scientific method scientific method so this is the scientific method huh? observations all of you at this stage now all of you are hmm? because you don't know what is your research title you haven't developed any proposal you are just observing hmm? observing later after today perhaps you will have some question in your mind uh, what should i start huh? which area to focus huh? so you will be finding a problem that is how your question will start then you will move to search the literature. Let's say you find a problem. Now you find the literature means uh, is the same thing being researched in some other parts, other parts of the world, or maybe other countries, or, or maybe in the same country, different parts, different areas. And what are their results? Do they find a significant result or insignificant? Then you search, you search all kind of information, which we call it literature review. Hmm? So once you find the information uh, from the contemporary literatures or contemporary studies, studies from the other people, uh, you tend to develop some hypothesis. So what is hypothesis? Uh? 
because you haven't done the actual uh, study yet. So based on the information you received, uh, based on the facts, uh, you would tend to come to a conclusion, right? Okay, the result of this perhaps can be this, right? So this, these are the hypotheses. Uh, of course, later in our uh, research methodology, our literature review will show how to draw the hypothesis. You see, when the uh, uh, pandemic situation started, uh, people started to use online classes. Now, online classes, uh, to attend the online classes, at the beginning, you see the attendance or participation of the students are very less. So we, we draw a hypothesis that perhaps the internet is not good. They are not good in technology. So these are our assumptions. Huh? These are our assumptions. These are the hypotheses. Huh? So we draw. Now, later, when we take the interview, or we ask the people, huh, in, let's say in a specific area, a specific town, you got a few hundred students. Huh? And uh, let's say 100 students, you, you, you talk to them, what is your problem? Then you find the actual problem. Huh? So, you know, initially you assume something, perhaps they are internet problem or technology, or they don't have proper infrastructure. After discussing to them or getting information from them, you find the correct uh, answer. Hmm? What is the real problem is? So this is how we draw a hypothesis. And then we do the experiment means we collect data, we analyze the data and we come to conclusion. You see, when you come to conclusion, your research is not finished yet. Huh? Research is not finished yet. Many of us may think that, oh, our research steps, no, it doesn't stop here. When you got the result, you do recommendations. You, re you do recommendations to solve the problem because you know what are the, you know all the histories and all, number one. Number two, you also recommend for further studies, perhaps you got some limitation, uh, perhaps you done in a specific area, perhaps you have done using a single method. So you can recommend uh, other people or for further studies uh, can be mixed method, can be in a different parts of the country or different parts of the area using different method. And develop interventions, uh, ask new questions. A new question is, your new study will start again. So this is a cycle. So basically from observation to conclusion is a scientific method. Later you share result, develop interventions and ask new questions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. This is the part of the cycle. I hope this is clear, you all understand. Now, so after discussing all these, let's redefine uh, what is the research. So. Research is a scientific process. Hmm? Research is a scientific process that validates and refines existing knowledge. Hmm? That validates and refines existing knowledge. Uh, because we, we are seeing something now, and after research, uh, we generate some new knowledge hmm? that directly or indirectly influence our work or work practices. I'm not sure who's uh, phone is uh, okay. Let me meet. All right. No. Sorry. Yeah. So again, uh, scientific as a, a research is a scientific process that validates and refines your existing knowledge and generate new knowledge that directly and indirectly influence the practices. In chapter five, we will discuss that. Uh, the finding or generation of new knowledge because your research will contribute uh, to the existing body of knowledge. It will also contribute to the practitioners. It will also uh, uh, contribute to the policy makers, et cetera, et cetera, the outcome of your result uh, based on your, your research. So this is a brief introduction of the research and the notes I send to you all that you, you, you studied that there are different types of research. You have empirical research, you have uh, uh, applied research, uh, qualitative, quantitative. I'm sure you have gone through all these things. Now, uh, based on that, you will be able to define uh, what research you are going to do. Now, 
basically today we will discuss about the proposal because from january that until 31st march uh, you are given three months time to develop your research hmm. so how to write a research proposal different university got different requirements i will be explaining the Brittany university requirements for writing a proposal now these are the part essential part of the uh, proposal your research proposal number one a title why i say provisional title because you will write a title and uh, other uh, parts of the research proposal then we assign your supervisor then you will have a discussion with your supervisor the title if supervisor give any feedback you might need to do a little changes or adjustment otherwise it is fine so first step to write a title second one the reason the reason for you know uh, the choosing the research topic you have given a title then uh, you also need to decide uh, why you have chosen this topic you need to write briefly then problem statement this is the important uh, or uh, critical part of your proposal you need to convince your reader i mean in case uh, we are the, your readers, huh? your uh, module leaders or your program leader is the reader. We need to understand, is there any problem? Or the problem you are writing, is it really a problem? Number one, number two, this problem, can you do research? Do you have all the information access, all these things, all the support to do research? Is it manageable within a fixed period of time? Because uh, your student need to complete the research within a fixed period of time. Then you will be writing research aim and objectives. Basically, once you are done with the problem statement, the other things are easy. Uh, you need to write your objective, the aims and objectives of and significance of the research. Then you will be also writing literature review. In the proposal, it's not much, but then uh, in a, a significant amount of literature you need to write because your total word count for the proposal is 4,000 to 4,500 words right and then you will be telling what method you want to follow that's a very simple one and you will be writing a referencing uh, so that is the overall view now let's look, look into the purpose of a research proposal huh? why we need to uh, student need to write a research proposal when you write a research proposal that communicates the details of your research so uh, your supervisor or university, they know what is your aim and objectives. Is it within the scope? Because all of you are business students. Some Certainly you give something, a proposal for uh, uh, in engineering or pure science or applied science, physics, chemistry, we are not able to take it. Huh? So we know, we know that you can, uh, from your uh, proposal, uh, what are the area you're going to do research. So if it is not within the business scope, we will recommend you to change, uh, to adjust something like this. This will also convince the reader or the authority to approve the proposal so that uh, 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 supervisor, supervisor uh, expert in your area, in your area of research, we can, we can appoint. So these are the reasons basically. So three essential points to convince uh, that your research is well articulated. So your research is well articulated. How, uh, if your aim and objective is clear, if your problem statement is well defined, so that will give you a direction. Your research uh, uh, is well justified. So make sure your the topic you have chosen to a particular area, this is unique. It's not copy to somebody else's idea. So this is unique. Something haven't uh, researched yet. The bridging the research gap. So we'll be discussing how to bridging the research gap. So it needs to be original. And worthwhile, it is important. It is important to a uh, few stakeholders. For example, uh, you are uh, trying to resolve an organizational issue. So that will directly benefit to the organization you are uh, trying to find some social issues all right for example 
uh, what are the factors influencing to adopt technology uh, in in the, maybe the university university among the university students so that will uh, benefit to your students also the university and the policy makers so useful to the manager or academic significance in the significance of the, your research you can explain all these things your research is doable so basically when we go through your uh, proposal we know whether within the limited period of time you can do or not hmm? so these are the reasons uh, you you need to uh, mention in uh, writing supervised uh, sorry pro uh, research proposal uh, clearly so all these points when are cleared uh, we, we are okay and uh, you are ready to go ahead uh, to undertake the research so the criteria of a good research topic uh, the good research topic now we are talking about the title a good research topic should be feasible, huh? can be done. It's not ambiguous. It's not very long. It's not difficult to understand. It, it needs to be very feasible. Interesting, hmm? something generous, interesting. Novel, novel means new here. Ethical and relevant, right? So these criteria have been collectively called fine, final. Now, how to write the uh, proposal? So this is what I mentioned earlier that uh, your proposal, the last date of submission is 31st of March, 2022. And the word count is 4,500 to 5,000, eh? 4,500 to 5,000 words maximum, right? So this form is already in your student portal, eh? uh, proposal guidelines. And this is how it looked like your cover page, the proposal cover page, all the information you need to write it. Now, so we have discussed about research and you are going to write a thesis, which is also is a, is a specific research, specific research. So a thesis is an idea or theory that expressed as a statement and discussed in a logical way. A thesis is a long piece of writing based on your own ideas and research that you're going to do a part of university degree especially uh, in a higher degree such as uh, phd or the doctorate level huh? a thesis is not same as the journal article so a journal or article is also part of research huh? but thesis is totally different from journal article huh? so this is the reason we try to define here what is thesis now in your proposal this is this is the sample table of content look like and all of you please uh, pay attention here it's very clear you need to have a title number one when you have a title you also need to write a background of your research give some information in the introduction you need to write a problem statement you need to write research aim and objective and the significance. And literature review is a preliminary. Who would be your population? That is the sources of data, how you're going to do your collection of data and what method you're going to follow. That means the type of research. So these are the key points. Huh? Although we repeat and repeat, when we receive the proposal, we see there is no research aim and objectives. There is no research questions. Sometimes huh, problem statement, they write in one or two lines. Problem statement is a key part of your research, huh, even in the research proposal. Huh? It cannot be one or two lines. I will show you in, in a while. So please take note all the points huh, and you should not miss uh, any points. Huh. In some cases, if you miss, uh, uh, we need to reject your proposal and we, we need to ask you to redo. So uh, this is important. Now let's look into the title. So a title, an empirical, let's say example, an empirical study on the service quality and patient satisfaction in Klangbeli, Malaysia. Klangbeli is a state, a part of uh, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. So do you understand what this, the title is saying? Are you here? You see here the two keyword. The two keywords are here 
is uh, service quality and patient satisfaction. So an empirical study means uh, uh, whereby a quantitative analysis, how to increase service quality and also the patient satisfaction where it's a specific location in Malaysia. So you see, this title of this research is not too long, easy to understand, not ambiguous or double meaning and all. Now, so you should write a research title, should be like this. The broader topic is in empirical studies, quantitative study. If we focus more, it is service quality and patient satisfaction, where the location is Klangbili, Malaysia. What method we are following? Quantitative. So these are the information we must know from your research title. So once title is done, then you go to the introduction. Now, this is done. Introduction or oh, background of the study. What are the information you, you, you should put it here? Or what are the requirements? Basically, we are looking to the introduction or background of the study. Here you will introduce the total topic and give your research a context and seeing how it fits and the previous studies in the field. Maybe you give some information, the same area, how it is done or some other studies. This section can explain how you're going to fill the gap, laying out your objectives and methodology. So in the introduction, you will introduce the whole, whole uh, research things. You will be uh, giving a context of this and you also briefly discuss uh, how you're going to uh, manage this and uh, the objectives you are setting, how you're going to achieve it. So basically these are the background information or introduction. Then you will write the problem statement. Hmm? As I mentioned, this is very important. You need to understand. As I mentioned earlier, if there's no problem, no research. So you need to have a problem. So when you write your title, there's always a problem. Now you need to explain it clearly so that your audience understand this. A problem statement is situation or circumstance that requires solution eh, to be described, explained, and predicted. Predicted, eh? three things. Eh? Described, explained, and predicted. And it is unsatisfactory situation that wants you to confront. Eh? You are not challenging anything. Eh? You will explain eh, and describe and predict. You are not going to challenge. Problem statement, the, according to the Creswell, remember Creswell is the guy who wrote the research methodology and his book is like Bible, everyone uh, reads this, you should read as well. Research problems are the educational issues, controversies, concerns uh, that guide the need for your conduct in the study. So the problem uh, or the problem statement, it can be any educational issues or controversies or any other concern for the, uh, at the moment, uh, different parts of the world, uh, digital education is a concern. Uh, rising of COVID uh, and finding solutions concern. Because of the COVID, people cannot uh, work uh, in the office. Uh, they need to work from home. The productivity increasing, motivation level is decreasing. So these are the concerns. These are the area of research, hmm? right? Now, problem statement and problematic situation, uh, not same. So please bear in mind, uh, problematic situation and researchable problem are not the same. What is the problematic situation and what is the researchable? Let's look into this. That problematic situation is a very large scope and have many dimensions. For example, uh, COVID-19 low education levels, uh, restrictive or trade policies, uh, restrictive. Uh, and unemployment. When you say restrictive trade policies, uh, does it give any specific problem? It is overall, it is very broad. Uh, it is very broad, it is very general. So this is a problematic situ situation or scenario. Now they say, if they say that 
uh, due to the COVID low education level at uh, Shanghai in China. So that, that indicates a particular area. So that area uh, can be researched, but low level of education, we don't know where. This is very general term, basically very general, huh? right? Remember in the uh, research title I showed to you, it, it, it indicates that it needs to be a specific area. This is one of the requirements. Huh? Now, so that is the problematic situations. And what are the researchable problems? Researchable problem that is very specific at which objectives of the research are very directed, very clear and within the scope. So general problem, general situations cannot be researched. This is the problematic situations. Whereas your researchable problem to be very specific to a particular place. Right, I hope this is clear. So your problem statement also need to answer this. Huh? Can you study the problem? Do you have the access to the research site? For example, huh? you want to conduct a research huh, to increase uh, the performance level for a, let's say, a hypermarket uh, industry in a, in a specific, let's say in Kuala Lumpur. In Kuala Lumpur, they've got many hypermarket, hmm? at least 10, 15, or oh, more than that. Now, you want to research, do a research, how to increase performance. Huh? Now, before you decide that, decide the topic, huh? you need to see, what, do you have the access? Because if the management don't allow uh, you to go and to take the interview to do the survey, right? So you need to decide on that. Do you have the time, resources, and the skills to carry out the research? Hmm? Your uh, study, whole study period is two years. If your uh, data collection and everything, it takes five years. So you cannot do the research here. So you need to bear in mind. Should you study the problem? The area you have selected, does it really got significance or importance? Or you are doing a research just for the sake of research? So you need to uh, answer this. Upon completion of your research, what are the stakeholders or who are the stakeholders that will get benefit directly? Yeah, so you need to uh, indicate also in your research problem. Now, these are the two area uh, you also need to understand. How does the research problem differ the quantitative and qualitative research? We, we always talk qualitative, quantitative, qualitative, quantitative now. When we use quantitative research problem require your variables, you also assess the relationship among the variables. You test uh, theories or a broad explanations and apply results to a large population. So quantitative or survey, you can do a large uh, population, many population. On the other hand, quantitative, you cannot. You need to take interview one by one. Right? It will take time. In quantitative, you also do uh, what you call, you test the hypothesis or based on your uh, literature review, you develop hypothesis or assumption. And then when you do your survey, you do analysis, data analysis, and you come to a conclusion. In quantitative, you also include the variables, same as uh, in uh, qualitative as well. On the other hand, qualitative, you observe. What do you observe? Observe people, attitude, behavior, you talk to them, take interview, all right? So this is how differ the qualitative and quantitative. Same way, your uh, problem statement also you need to write based on uh, what are the study you are going to do. Mm -hmm. So these are the area you need to remember. Now, in order to write a good problem statement, you need to know what is the research gap. Research gap. For example, uh, in a specific area in Kuala Lumpur, uh, electronic uh, or uh, electronic government adoption or uh, any new technology adoption, uh, the a study has been done. But the study has been done using quantitative method. No one has done yet the qualitative method. So there's a gap. What gap? Theoretical gap. Methodological gap. Quantitative method. 
So you, you, you still have the chance or the gap you, you have is qualitative. So you can fill the gap with the qualitative research. All right. So this is what we call research gap. Basically what we need to know and what we already know. That will indicate you the research gap. In the research gap, you have knowledge gap. Uh, people uh, have done study to a specific area and certain things have indicated as a further study, which can be researched. And you have done with this, this is called as a knowledge gap. Evidence gap occurs when the proactive expectation arises with the new research findings contradict with the accepted conclusion. Uh, let's say uh, that there is a new current practice, but the new researchers saying uh, this is the new result. Uh, very often nowadays, uh, we say that uh, uh, different vaccination, AstraZeneca is uh, very good for uh, Delta variants. Some say no, uh, some say Pfizer vaccine is good for this. So this is the evidence which a uh, best uh, gap. Empirical. The gap deals with the prior research whereby there is a conflict between the research findings and proposition need to be empirically verified. The past studies is showing some results, but the current study on the same area or same set of population giving a different result. And it has been validated uh, empirically or applied research has been done. So knowledge gap, evidence gap, and empirical gap. We also have the practical knowledge gap. A practical knowledge whereby the actual research and conflict arise when the actual behavior is different from the advocated behavior, such as the research is engaged to an uncovered reason. The methodological gap, I already mentioned that some studies are done based on quantitative, some are qualitative, some are done on the mixed method using both qualitative and quantitative method. You also have the population gap or contextual gap. Some studies are done based on the citizen. Some studies are based on uh, employee perspective. So these are the population gap. Theoretical gap. The same area use different, different underpinning theory. Hmm? So these are called as theoretical gap. So how to know which research is based on what theory and all, I will be showing one or two articles. So I will show you how to find out the gap. Now, why is the research gap is important? Establish the importance of your topic. Now you want to write a particular, you want to do a, a particular research on a specific topic. You must tell us why it is important. In order to tell us why it is important, you need to know the existing studies, existing research done on the same topic. So this is how you will be establishing an importance to the topic. You need to highlight the main reason why the research has been undertaken. You also need to know that uh, critically important part of the research project, uh, why this is research is very important for these, these people. Uh, I told you, right, that there are many stakeholders the research you are doing. So you need to explain it also in the problem statement, upon completion of this research, this is part you will be benefited. Put forward the uniqueness of your study. You need to tell that this probably has not been done area. Uh, this area has not been researched yet. This also will serve you the good research question and research objectives uh, for the development. So these are the reason there are some more. Uh, research gap also will Put forward the significance of your study. If you uh, find out the gaps, you can write the significance. It will arise or create interest among the reader. It also focuses the reader's attention and how study will add value to the current literatures. So in a nutshell, a well-defined and structured research problem is the heart of your research project, is the heart. Now, how to identify the gap? How to know the research gap? You need to critically review the existing theories, consistent reading and synthesizing the literature. You need to find the articles, journals, huh? 
and identify your key motivating issues and questions. So these are the way you need to continue to find out the research gap and research problem. How to find the research gap? You can find it from existing literatures, from the academicians, senior academicians. You can uh, find out from the social concern. Nowadays, uh, uh, due to pandemic, there are many concerns. From your personal experiences, from the practitioners no? or the policy makers. So this is how you can find out the research gap. A good example of research gap. Huh? You see here, uh, let me read and also you, you also can read by yourself. And noted by Wu in 2011 and Cham et al. 2016 studies related to the aspects of branding within the healthcare. So they're talking about the branding in the healthcare and medical tourism industry remained under uh, examined. That means uh, until 2016 uh, in the medical industry or medical uh, area, the branding or medical tourism, no one talked about. See, he said under examined uh, to date. That means no one examined, no, no one did any study on that. With the limited empirical evidence in addressing the importance to the brand image, this scenario reflects a research gap or exploring. So they find a gap which no one has studied yet, and they find this is a gap or exploring. It's important to explore. As a superior brand image can be arguably by be a factor within the healthcare provides and facilities decision making, risk assessment and medical service visualization and medical service evaluation among medical tourists. Moreover, this perception toward the brand image of a hospital will potentially influence their assessment on service quality, which in turn will have an impact on their level of satisfaction, perceived value, and most importantly, intention to revisit. You see, uh, when we say medical, people are talking about the patient or treatment. Uh, this medical, the treatment is good, doctors are good, you go. So medical also can be used as medical tourism, something very new. Huh? So no one has studied before. So these studies was done in uh, also in uh, Kuala Lumpur. So this is how a good example of research gap. So if you find, if you can find out this kind of research gap, so you can uh, write your problem statement very clearly. Attributes of a good uh, problem statement. What are the characteristics uh, uh, to write uh, or we can find in a good uh, problem statement? It is formulated clearly and understandably, all right? It is formulated adequately in terms of defined concept relevant to the topic of the study or field of the study. It doesn't relate to something trivial or uncertain. And the problem has to be very specific. It's not uncertain, no. It cannot be the problem statement. If you think, I think this, no, it cannot be. Huh? Because it's still your thinking level, you're not sure. It needs to be very specific that holds the prospect of expansion of subject of knowledge. The theory, practical or problem or the previous research from which it proceeds logically is clearly described. Hmm? This is are the uh, attributes of the problem, a good problem statement. It also set out the different points of view and assumptions. It culminates in research hypothesis and research questions, which are formulated clearly in terms of the relationship between the important variables. This also convinced the reader that the study must be done. Uh, bear in mind, uh, this is the key area. Make sure after reading your problem statement, your reader feel that the research must be done something uh, new will come out, hmm? interesting. Implications of the good problem. A good uh, problem statement set out the blueprint of the direction of the research. So the moment your uh, problem statement is stated, done, you know to, to, towards uh, your direction, which uh, uh, way you are directing, you're moving forward. A good problem statement will have a good aim that will lead you good research questions and research objectives. It will also help you to build a solid research model 
which will turn the set a uh, testable hypothesis. It will be better clarity, control, and implementation of data collection and the data analysis. And right data analysis will also be, you know, indicate or get an idea from problem statement. For your information, I just give one or two problem statement uh, how to write and all. The topic uh, is uh, distance learning or online learning. So. The problem uh, statement, research problem is, look, we are reading the second para that live online session may be delivered in a virtual classroom from Adobe Connect, Illuminate, or GoToMeeting, or Zoom, or other software programs. Regardless of the software used, student attendance at a live online session, especially optional ones, uh, can be unpredictable at best. It is a common complaint among the online faculty at the university in the south uh, that many of and most of their students do not attend uh, the live online sessions. This study will address the problem of low student attendance at non-mandatory virtual classroom uh, online college courses. So the problem is very clear. In the university, uh, they mentioned the south, let's say, for example, south university, they say online classes for the courses that not mandatory, the student presence is low. So this is the problem. And the last sentence, if you read, the study will address the problem of low student attendance at non-mandatory virtual classroom meetings in the online college courses. So the study, actually, the objective is to increase uh, the attendance of the student. Uh, or uh, for the uh, non-mandatory courses. So this is a problem. So we discuss about the introduction, then you will uh, talk about the background of your research. Then straight away we will come to problem statement. You need to write a good problem statement, all the characteristics we have discussed. Now you will come to research problem objectives. Research objectives and research questions. So your research objective will describe uh, and expect to what to achieve from the project. What is your overall objectives? It needs to be accurate description of the specific actions, accurate uh, description of the specific actions that you will take in order to uh, reach your aim. Uh, it is really to be in a sentence. Huh? So let's see the example of research objectives. Many students make mistakes here. Please remember that. They write paragraph in a, in a, instead of writing objectives. If you want to write research objectives, you can write to examine or to study like this. It need to be very specific. So I write example huh? to examine the relationship between brand image and service quality. Remember earlier, I show you the title, uh, how to increase the brand image and uh, uh, patient experience uh, uh, satisfaction uh, in a hospitality industry. So the specific objective is to examine the relationship between brand image and service quality to examine the moderating effect of price consciousness and for the relationship between clothing interest and purchase intention. Another example can be to examine the mediating effect, corporate image for the relationship between service quality and customer satisfaction. So these are the examples of research objectives. Now let's look into the research questions. Your research questions is a statement of a problem that investigated. It could also be phrased uh, that form of question or form of uh, formal hypothesis. So the specific examples are, is there any relationship between brain image and service quality? Will the price consciousness moderate the relationship between clothing interest and purchase intention? Will corporate image mediate the relationship between service quality and customer satisfaction. 
So you can see that there is a relationship between your research objectives and research questions. So uh, this is how it's linked together, uh, research objectives and research questions. All right. The next is your uh, significance of the study. You need to explain uh, the importance of the research. You will be explaining uh, to what extent uh, the study will contribute. There are four main areas of contribution, uh, theoretical development or tangible solution, innovative method or policy extension, how your research will be contributing. You will be explaining to that. You will also be explaining, you should specifically state the value of the study, why the study is important, and telling your reader who will benefit from your research. Literature review and research design will cover in our uh, next session, which will be held on uh, 21st of January. Now, the last part is your research plan, or we call it gun chart. You need to give a plan. Many proposal we receive, uh, we don't see any plan. So we, we need to reject it. So this is an essential part of your research proposal. And finally, you will be adding your uh, referencing, Harvard referencing stack. So I think we have uh, briefly discussed about your research proposal expectations, the table of content, you need to write introduction, the background of your research, then you will be writing your problem statement. Uh, then you will be writing your research objectives and research questions, significance of your studies. You will be also writing uh, the preliminary literature review and research methodology, uh, followed by a gun chart or a plan uh, and your referencing. So these are the essential parts of your uh, research proposal. So next classes will be, uh, next session will be covering your, uh, uh, what do you call the literature review and research methodology. Now, uh, I, uh, let open me the question. Uh, do you have any question first before uh, I will show you some other documents uh, important for you? Any question so far? No questions, huh? all right. Now, let me show you one uh, example of uh, your proposal. Can you guys see my screen now? All right. So the title of a research, uh, 10 to 15 words uh, or 20 words. Don't try to make it too long. Don't try to make it too long. As I mentioned, one example, uh, an empirical study of the service quality and patient satisfaction in the Klang Valley in Malaysia. So you see uh, the keyword here uh, within the five words. Uh, so after that, uh, you will be writing an abstract. And uh, as I mentioned, introduction. So introduction, uh, you will be discussing your, the background of your study. And then you will write about your problem statement. You will be also writing your uh, research questions, research objectives. Right, this one, I give you some more information on. Try not to make more than five research objectives. It will be too many. Sometimes we notice that student writing six, seven, eight, oh, it's too many, eh? but no less than three. If you write less than three objectives, eh, it's also not doctorate level. So in order to maintain a doctorate level, eh, minimum three, you should go maximum five. Eh? Within this range is good. Same. Based on 
based on your research objectives, you will be writing research questions. Sometimes one objective can be two questions as well. That is absolutely fine as long as you can justify. So you will be writing your research question, research objectives, significance of the study and research con contribution, right? Then you will be writing your research structure summary. You will be writing your research uh, literature review, the preliminary one. Next session, we'll be discussing in details how to write your literature review. And of course, your, uh, what do you call, uh, research methodology. So basically, chapter one, two, three, you will be discussing in your uh, proposal, followed by a uh, gun chart or your, uh, what do you call, uh, plan and uh, your uh, references, that's all, right? Uh, I will be also giving you a textbook. And there are many textbooks, but I will be giving two, which is not there. This is a textbook I will be sharing with you after this uh, session. I will be mailing you how to write on your research proposal. This is a good textbook. Whatever I have discussed, they, it is also restated here. So writing a proposal for your dissertation. It's a step by step. It's a very good book, textbook. You can follow as well for your guidelines. So all the information I have discussed today, they also stated very clearly. So it will be a guideline, good guideline for you. See, uh, chapter one, writing problem statement for your dissertation, uh, purpose statement, research question, hypothesis, all these informations are there, chapter one, two, three. But this is only for your reading, eh? you need to follow the structure or format of Brittany University. This is from the Western. Eh? So this is just a textbook for your information. Eh? And uh, for the your uh, research proposal template, it is already available in your uh, portal. You need to follow that format, right? Uh, I think I am done for two days, uh, all the area we have covered. Uh, if there is no other question, I think we will end our session here. Uh, Dr. Uh, Shihao, can I uh, have a question? Yes, uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, uh, during the meantime, the, if we have some uh, question or we have some idea, I would like to have your comment. Uh, can we send you an email uh, for your comment? Yeah, yeah, please. Sir. It's better. I will suggest all of you, uh, let's say this week or uh, next week or another one or two weeks time when you decide your title share with me so i'll give my comment okay because sometimes uh, i see that titles are too long cannot be huh? it's, it doesn't fit the defeat the purpose so once uh, uh, you you are already uh, you know in a confident that these are the area you would like to take the research for your thesis huh? So you need to write, the first thing is you will write your title. So share with me. So I'll give my feedback. Then uh, uh, as you go along with your, your proposal writing, if you have any question, you can share. You have my email and all. Uh, I can give my comment definitely. All right, any other uh, questions? Uh, Albert is always uh, fast. Eh? I think I, I have, he already sent me the structure of his proposal. It's very good. Very good, Albert. Hmm. All right. Uh, if there's no other question from anyone else, uh, we end our session here. Right? Okay, good night. Okay, good night. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks. Sir. Good night. Good night.